Joshua chapter 15 The land allotted to the tribe of Judah, according to its clans, extended down to the territory of Edom, to the desert of Zin, in the extreme south. Their southern boundary started from the bay at the southern end of the Dead Sea, crossed south of Scorpion Pass, continued on to Zin, and went over to the south of Kadesh Barnea. Then it ran past Hezron, up to Ada, and curved round to Karka. It then passed along to Asmon and joined the Wadi of Egypt, ending at the Mediterranean Sea. This is their southern boundary. The eastern boundary is the Dead Sea, as far as the mouth of the Jordan. The northern boundary started from the Bay of the Sea at the mouth of the Jordan, went up to Beth Hogla, and continued north of Beth Arabah to the stone of Bohan, son of Reuben. The boundary then went up to Debir from the valley of Akor, and turned north to Gilgal, which faces the pass of Adamim, south of the gorge. It continued along to the waters of En Shemesh, and came out at En Rogel. Then it ran up the valley of Ben Hinnom, along the southern slope of the Jebusite city, that is, Jerusalem. From there it climbed to the top of the hill west of the Hinnom Valley, at the northern end of the valley of Rephaim. From the hilltop, the boundary headed towards the spring of the waters of Nephtoah, came out of the towns of Mount Ephron, and went down towards Beala, that is, kiriath Jearim. Then it curved westward from Beala to Mount Seir, ran along the northern slope of Mount Jearim, that is, Kezalon, continued down to Beth Shemesh, and crossed to Timnah. It went to the northern slope of Ekron, turned towards Shikaron, passed along to Mount Beala, and reached Jabneel. The boundary ended at the sea. The western boundary is the coastline of the Mediterranean Sea. These are the boundaries around the people of Judah by their clans. In accordance with the Lord's command to him, Joshua gave to Caleb, son of Jephunneh, a portion in Judah, Kiriath Arba, that is, Hebron. Arba was the forefather of Anak. From Hebron, Caleb drove out the three Anakites, Shishai, Ahiman, and Talmai, the sons of Anak. From there he marched against the people living in Debir, formerly called Kiriath Sifia. And Caleb said, I will give my daughter Aksa in marriage to the man who attacks and captures Kiriath Sifia. Othniel, son of Kenaz, Caleb's brother, took it. So Caleb gave his daughter Aksa to him in marriage. One day, when she came to Othniel, she urged him to ask her father for a field. When she got off her donkey, Caleb asked her, What can I do for you? She replied, Do me a special favor. Since you have given me land in the Negev, give me also springs of water. So Caleb gave her the upper and lower springs. This is the inheritance of the tribe of Judah, according to its clans. The southernmost towns of the tribe of Judah in the Negev towards the boundary of Edom were Kabzeel, Eda, Jaga, Kaina, Daimona, Adada, Kidesh, Hazor, Ithnan, Ziph, Telem, Bialoth, Hazor Hadata, Karayoth Hezron, that is Hazor, Ammon, Shema, Maleda, Hazagada, Hezmon, Beth Pilet, Hazor Shual, Beersheba, Baizeothia, Beela, Lethem, Ezem, El Tolad, Kizel, Horma, Ziklag, Madmana, Sansana, Lebeoth, Shilhim, Ain, and Rimon. A total of twenty nine towns and their villages. In the western foothills, Eshteo, Zora, Ashna, Zanoa, and Ganim, Tapua, Enam, Jamuth, Adalam, Soko, Asika, Shearaim, Adithaim, and Gedira, or Gedorathaim, fourteen towns and their villages. Zinan, Hadasha, Migdalgad, Dilian, Mizpah, Jokthil, Lakish, Bozkath, Eglon, Kabon, Lamas, Kitlish, Gediroth, Benthdagan, Neama, and Makada, sixteen towns and their villages. Libna, Etha, Ashan, Iptha, Ashna, Nizib, Kiaila, Aksib, and Marisha, nine towns and their villages. Ekron, 
with its surrounding settlements and villages. West of Ekron, all that were in the vicinity of Ashdod, together with their villages. Ashdod, its surrounding settlements and villages, and Gaza, its settlements and villages as far as the Wadi of Egypt and the coastline of the Mediterranean Sea. In the hill country, Shemi, Jata, Soka, Dana, Kiriath, Sana, that is, Dibia, Enab, Eshtemo, Ainim, Goshan, Holon, and Gilo, eleven towns and their villages, Arab, Duma, Ishan, Janim, Bethtapua, Afika, Hamta, Kiriath Arba, that is Hebron, and Zior, nine towns and their villages, Maon, Carmel, Ziph, Jatta, Jezreel, Yokdiam, Zenoe, Cain, Gibeah, and Timna, ten towns and their villages, Halchul, Bethzur, Jidor, Merath, Bethanoth, and Eltakon, six towns and their villages, Kiriath Baal, that is Kiriath Jearim, and Rabbah, two towns and their villages. In the wilderness, Beth Araba, Midin, Sikika, Nibshan, the city of salt, and En Gedi, six towns and their villages. Judah could not dislodge the Jebusites who were living in Jerusalem. To this day, the Jebusites live there with the people of Judah. Joshua chapter 16 The land allotted to Joseph began at the Jordan east of the springs of Jericho, and went up from there through the desert into the hill country of Bethel. It went on from Bethel, that is, Luz, crossed over to the territory of the Archites in Ataroth, descended westwards to the territory of the Japhletites as far as the region of Lower Beth-Horan, and on to Giza, ending at the Mediterranean Sea. So Manasseh and Ephraim, the descendants of Joseph, received their inheritance. This was the territory of Ephraim according to its clans. The boundary of their inheritance went from Atarov Adda in the east to Upper Beth Horon and continued to the Mediterranean Sea. From Mikmathath on the north, it curved eastward to Teanath Shiloh, passing by it to Genoa on the east. Then it went down from Genoa to Atarov and Neera touched Jericho and came out of the Jordan. From Tapua, the border went west to the Kea ravine and ended at the Mediterranean Sea. This was the inheritance of the tribe of the Ephraimites, according to its clans. It also included all the towns and their villages that were set aside for the Ephraimites within the inheritance of the Manassites. They did not dislodge the Canaanites living in Giza, to this day, the Canaanites live among the people of Ephraim, but are required to do forced labor. Luke chapter 13 Now there were some present at that time who told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mixed with their sacrifices. Jesus answered, Do you think these Galileans were worse sinners than all the other Galileans because they suffered this way? I tell you no, but unless you repent, you too will all perish. Or those eighteen who died when the tower in Siloam fell on them, do you think they were more guilty than all the others living in Jerusalem? I tell you no, but unless you repent, you too will all perish. Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree growing in his vineyard and he went to look for fruit on it, but did not find any. So he said to the man who took care of the vineyard, For three years now I have been coming to look for fruit on this fig tree, and haven't found any. Cut it down. Why should it use up the soil? Sir, the man replied, Leave it alone for one more year, and I'll dig around it and fertilize it. If it bears fruit next year, fine. If not, then cut it down. On a Sabbath, Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues, and a woman was there who had been crippled by a spirit for eighteen years. She was bent over and could not straighten up at all. When Jesus saw her, he called her forward and said to her, Woman, you are set free from your infirmity. Then he put his hands on her, and immediately she straightened up 
and praised God. Indignant because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath, the synagogue leader said to the people, There are six days for work, so come and be healed on those days, not on the Sabbath. The Lord answered him, You hypocrites! Doesn't each of you on the Sabbath untie your ox or donkey from the stall and lead it out to give it water? Then should not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has kept bound for eighteen long years, be set free on the Sabbath day from what bound her? When he said this, all his opponents were humiliated, but the people were delighted with all the wonderful things he was doing. Then Jesus asked, What is the kingdom of God like? What shall I compare it to? It is like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted in his garden. It grew and became a tree, and the birds perched in its branches. Again he asked, What shall I compare the kingdom of God to? It is like yeast that a woman took and mixed into about thirty kilograms of flour until it worked all through the dough. Then Jesus went through the towns and villages, teaching as he made his way to Jerusalem. Someone asked him, Lord, are only a few people going to be saved? He said to them, Make every effort to enter through the narrow door, because many, I tell you, will try to enter and will not be able to. Once the owner of the house gets up and closes the door, you will stand outside, knocking and pleading, Sir, open the door for us. But he will answer, I don't know you, or where you come from. Then you will say, We ate and drank with you, and you taught in our streets. But he will reply, I don't know you, or where you come from. Away from me, all you evildoers. There will be weeping there, and gnashing of teeth, when you see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, but you yourselves thrown out. People will come from east and west and north and south, and will take their places at the feast in the kingdom of God. Indeed, there are those who are last who will be first, and first who will be last. At that time, some Pharisees came to Jesus and said to him, Leave this place and go somewhere else. Herod wants to kill you. He replied, Go tell that fox. I will keep on driving out demons and healing people today and tomorrow, and on the third day I will reach my goal. In any case, I must press on today and tomorrow and the next day for surely no prophet can die outside Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those sent to you. How often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, and you were not willing. Look, your house is left to you, desolate. I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Psalm 80 Hear us, shepherd of Israel, you who led Joseph like a flock. You who sit enthroned between the cherubim, shine forth before Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh. Awaken your might. Come and save us. Restore us, O God. Make your face shine on us, that we may be saved. How long, Lord God Almighty, will your anger smolder against the prayers of your people? You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have made them drink tears by the bowlful. You have made us an object of derision to our neighbours, and our enemies mock us. Restore us, God Almighty. Make your face shine on us, that we may be saved. You transplanted a vine from Egypt. You drove out the nations and planted it. You cleared the ground for it, and it took root and filled the land. 
The mountains were covered with its shade, the mighty cedars with its branches. Its branches reached as far as the sea, its shoots as far as the river. Why have you broken down its walls, so that all who pass by pick its grapes? Boars from the forest ravage it, and insects from the fields feed on it. Return to us, God Almighty. Look down from heaven and see. Watch over this vine, the root your right hand has planted, the sun you have raised up for yourself. Your vine is cut down, it is burned with fire. At your rebuke your people perish. Let your hand rest on the man at your right hand, the son of man you have raised up for yourself. Then we will not turn away from you. Revive us, and we will call on your name. Restore us, Lord God Almighty. Make your face shine on us, that we may be saved. Proverbs chapter 18 An unfriendly person pursues selfish ends, and against all sound judgment starts quarrels. Fools find no pleasure in understanding, but delight in airing their own opinions. When wickedness comes, so does contempt, and with shame comes reproach. The words of the mouth are deep waters, but the fountain of wisdom is a rushing stream. It is not good to be partial to the wicked, and so deprive the innocent of justice. The lips of fools bring them strife, and their mouths invite a beating. The mouths of fools are their undoing, and their lips are a snare to their very lives. The words of a gossip are like choice morsels. They go down to the inmost parts. One who is slack in his work is brother to one who destroys. The name of the Lord is a fortified tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. The wealth of the rich is their fortified city. They imagine it a wall too high to scale. Before a downfall, the heart is haughty, but humility comes before honor. To answer before listening, that is folly and shame. The human spirit can endure in times of illness, but a crushed spirit... Who can bear? The heart of the discerning acquires knowledge, for the ears of the wise seek it out. A gift opens the way and ushers the giver into the presence of the great. In a lawsuit, the first to speak seems right, until someone comes forward and cross-examines. Casting the lot settles disputes and keeps strong opponents apart. A brother wronged is more unyielding than a fortified city. Disputes are like the barred gates of a citadel. From the fruit of their mouth a person's stomach is filled. With the harvest of their lips they are satisfied. The tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. He who finds a wife finds what is good and receives favor from the Lord. The poor plead for mercy but the rich answer harshly. One who has unreliable friends soon comes to ruin, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother.